So I just went through my eBay inventory. And if you were to ask me at any given time, I would swear that I am on top of my eBay store and on top of knowing what's going on with my eBay inventory. And I thought I was up until today when I went through and I realized I've been missing out. I've been overlooking some really silly things and missing out on literally potentially thousands of dollars worth of sales. And I wanted to make this video talk about uh, what I what I missed out on and make sure you guys are on top of this, unlike I was, because this is a big deal. And I don't I, I'm, I'm fixing that mistake today. Put that money back into my fancy pockets and into your fancy pockets by being on top of this stuff. So let's hop into the video and I appreciate your time. Thanks. Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Pits of YouTube. I'm an online resource for those new to these parts. I've been doing this for about 13 years now. I go into the wilds of thrift stores and garage sales and estate sales and liquidation pallet storage units on occasion, which are a fun fact. That's my favorite way to find inventory. I don't do it enough. Been trying to put money into my fancy pockets. In this video, I'm talking about something that I was actually watching some YouTube as I do. I'm a little bit of a YouTube junkie, especially with reselling content is where I learned to do this business. And I think the podcast, or I think the uh, the channel is like called Profit Playbook Podcast. And I can't recall, I'll put that uh, up here just so you guys can see what it is. A couple of great hosts, a couple of great resellers uh, host the show. And they had a guest on recently where they were talking about basically taking inventory of your inventory. And I thought I was on top of my inventory. I think I know what's going on in my inventory at all times. And I was actually shocked. I don't even have a huge store like a lot of folks out there. I, I, I know some of you resellers out there have thousands of items listed at any given time. I'm lucky to ever have 300, 200. I kind of, I kind of hover around the 200 to 250 items at any given time. That's about what I have been doing for the past few years. And because it's so few items, relatively speaking, I'm always under the assumption that I know what's going on in my inventory, but I recently went through and found a ton of stuff that was sitting on my shelves that I thought I had had listed. And it's not just cheap stuff. There's some really expensive stuff. So I want to show you guys and wonder how often you guys go through the inventory that you have. Uh, and I know you, you may have a lot bigger stores than me, and I can only imagine if I was such a small store, I found, I don't know, it must be 20 to 25 items of roughly 10% or more of my entire inventory at any given time, stuff that I thought I had had listed. And I know I did at one certain point, but I don't know, something, something, uh, some wires crossed, something happened to the eBay system and they were no longer listed. And I'm talking it's hundreds, if not over a thousand, maybe even a couple thousand dollars worth of inventory that is sitting on my shelves that has been sitting there who not selling. And some of it has some, some real value. So I want to show you guys some of that stuff while also showing you a fantastic little find that I found that I negotiated for at a recent thrift store. My favorite ways to thrift uh, when I find stuff in bulk and multiple quantities of item. And I want to talk about that deal that I made because you guys might be interested uh, and you might not be. You might be like, hey, I'm switching this channel off because I have better stuff to do with my time and I don't wouldn't blame you. So this is the room. Once everything has been pictured, it's been listed, it's been priced. This is where all the process stuff in this room goes to die. And by die, I mean it dies its current life and awaits its new buyer where it starts its new life. So all this stuff processed and just waiting. And what I did all here, it looks a little chaotic to some, but I think it's relatively organized until we look over here. This is part of the story. I do want to talk about this stuff, but this is, you know, jackets live here. There's some shoes. Uh, just random boxes and bigger items over here. So what I ended up doing, this is the point of this video, was I went through all the shelves here in every bucket one by one just to see kind of like what was inside. And I went through and I compared it to my active inventory on eBay. And I was actually shocked with the amount of stuff that was sitting in these buckets that weren't actually listed on eBay. They weren't in a draft form. They just didn't exist for sale on eBay. So that's this stuff here. And I'm gonna actually pull it out into the light here because I wanted to show you and highlight some of this 
stuff. We're going to pull this into this other room here. And this room here, whoop, hat down. This stuff here, this room is where all the stuff sits until uh, it is listed. And then it goes to that other room. The, the mandatory and prerequisite of being a reseller is your Ikea bags that you can fill and bring to uh, the post office. But anyway, back to this stuff, back to the goodies. So all this stuff was things that were hanging around, not listed, not making me money. And I have to show you a few things because it's unreal. Uh, some of the, the higher end stuff like this, this aura ring. So this is like 225, 250 bucks. And this was just sitting in there. And I think I know why this was actually purchased. I don't know, eight months ago uh, for uh, 225, 250, something like that. And it didn't fit the person. So they returned it. And then it ended up somehow back in the process room and it wasn't relisted. So this is roughly 200 bucks, 180, 190, something like that, that has been uh, eluding me up until now. So that's uh, going to be relisted. A lot of this stuff is, is very much the same like this. I actually had two of these originally. Um, and same with this, these Oakley sunglasses. I had two of these originally and i think i made the mistake when i was listing them that i only put a quantity of one so when the one sold the listing obviously uh, deactivated as they it showed that i was sold out but these i had two of and these are like a hundred or 110 120 dollar glasses something like that i think this is like 50 bucks or so uh, a lot of disney pins uh a lot of great disney uh lounge fly pins uh, this Dixon flannel shirt, same thing. This is something that somebody purchased, was returned. For some reason, it ended up back in the uh, the no-no room without being relisted. So that's like a $40 shirt. These, these uh, Clarifion, Cl Clarifion, uh, you know, reading is not for me. But um, this is, this is again, this is like a $35, $45 item, something like that. Maybe it's a little more, I can't recall. But this has been sitting in there for, I have no idea how long. Uh, just, and that's, you know, more money for my fancy pocket. We got some Crocs that were in there, Bombas socks. And these are super popular, as you know. And I have like four pair here, just sitting, collecting dust, not, not collecting money. A brand new Wii controller. I think that's like 50 bucks or so. So you can just see all this stuff is just stuff, uh, you know, it's over... I would I would guess by the time I add up everything here, it's it's over a thousand bucks. This package was actually uh, this this was something that someone bought, and eBay said not to send it out because it was through a fraudulent account, and uh, somehow ended again up in the Goblin Lair no no room, and it wasn't relisted. I don't even know what what it is uh, exactly because it's been in there so long. So. Um, if it's what I think it might be, it's like a 40 or $50 baby item. Um, so again, it's just all this stuff is just stuff that was sitting around and not making me money that uh, I'm glad I found it now because we're headed into Q4 and there's an apple to help keep those doctors away. So I know this lost slash not lost inventory situation is not exclusive or unique to me. I, I know we're all going through this process of discovering things that we have in inventory that we think and assume are, are listed live on eBay. And then suddenly we figure out that, uh, hey, you know, this has been in here for a really long time. Let me check it out and realize, oh, it's not even listed. So I wanna hear from you guys about your process of keeping track, especially those who have really large stores. Uh, do you use software? Uh, what do you do? Or do you just have like keep mental notes? Kind of like that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. Just uh, really basic primitive inventory and assuming if it's over there i have such a small store that uh, i can't imagine that i had a problem and yet there 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 certainly was a problem so let me know about about how you guys tend to manage this this inventory and log in your inventory and, and how you keep track and also we're hopping in now to this fantastic deal that i made at a recent thrift store my buddy actually owns a thrift store and we we traded merchandise kind of like in the old pioneer days but uh, check this out it's a really fantastic deal and i also wanted to mention this fantastic deal i made on all of these funko pops and it's mostly these art the clowns and then there's a few ghost face from screen and terrifier art the clowns from the the terrifier movie i'm not sure if you guys are fans of horror fan uh, horror films but i certainly am which uh by the way shout out for my other channel 
I'll pop it up uh, here, Salem House Films. I actually work on and produce horror films, so if there's any people out there that enjoy horror films, the films they make are not as quality as Hollywood films. They are indie productions, but, you know, if you're a horror fan, you're a horror fan like myself, and, and we like making horror movies. So this is the one non-pop. And I do want to add that my friend and I who traded this deal, we both made out really well, I think, because I basically traded him stuff that doesn't have any value, even at a flea market. You know, I showed you a few things uh, that I am bringing to the flea market, and it's not even of that quality. The stuff that I, I, I basically gave to him, uh, his customers actually do buy at his store. It's like one to five dollar items, you know, knock off silverware or low end silverware or utensils or maybe like cheap Chinese like um, manufactured like an alarm clock or something like that where it's just no name brand just random probably like you know six dollars on amazon type of thing so i gave him hundreds of those particular items that i would have just straight up donated in exchange for you know he had these valued at his store for eight dollars a pop and that's you know pun intended here so even if i'm selling these for say 20 bucks which I'm probably going to push like 22, 23, maybe even 25 bucks for these things. And that's all inclusive, uh, inclusive of shipping. Ops are one of those things, as we all know, uh, people that buy these are sticklers for condition. I don't blame people. So they don't want, uh, some people I should say, don't want to purchase this because it has a dent in the box. So that's part of this deal is a lot of these, I think almost all of them have some variation of denting in different degrees like this one's pretty beat up you can see i'm not going to be getting that 30 or 35 dollars that they seem to be selling for maybe 20 to 25 somewhere in that range and that'll be all inclusive of of shipping i only have two separate pops like the majority of them are this art the clown and then there's only like seven or eight of these and then almost 30 of the art the clown so it's only two listings that i have to make and i'll take a picture kind of this will kind of be like a listing picture, something like this, where it'll say multiple available. They all have varying degrees of, of denting and all the packaging has wear. And I'll take a picture and highlight some of the worst ones just so people don't have the expectations. You know, I want to, to make sure people knowing that they are buying a damaged box pop figure. How do you guys do that? I'd like to hear um, how you would list these things since I don't want to make 35 different listings. Uh, just because they all have 35 different, um, you know, varying degrees of wear, as you can see. However, I know that it's not a bad idea, and some of you might actually prefer or say that that is the right thing to do, and that might be true, um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show that, you know, some of them, I think there's one of these has like a rip in the box. Uh, I'm not sure where it might be, but oh yeah, right there. So I'll take a picture of this one for sure and say, you know, that there's a tear in that box. I'll find ones with the bigger dents like that one. And so I'll highlight the worst of the damage on some of these boxes and make it very clear that they will be getting one of these and they all have some sort of denting, ripping at the package, just so people's expectations that they're not getting a new pop. And then I did want to cover this stuff here as this stuff was also sitting on the shelves in these buckets here and this particular stuff however is not going to be released this stuff is going to a flea market and some of this stuff does have some value on ebay and is selling on ebay like something like this which is um you know it's a popular i think it's a popular brand i could be i could be wrong oh these were things that were also uh didn't make that were just sitting in the buckets and should be listed on eBay, but they weren't not high value, but I think like maybe a $15 game, maybe a 20 or $25 in cartridge. Anyway, back to the flea market, you know, this, this was up on eBay for, I think two months, which for me is very long. Um, I have a, I usually sell stuff within two or three weeks of listing it, unless it's something super unique. Um, I don't have too many long tail items. I try to to avoid them unless they have a lot of value. But anyway, this um, didn't sell about two months and it was only selling for about $25 to $30 overall. Um, I only have like $3 or so into it, but uh, it didn't sell. Halloween is now over. So I figure I'm going to bring this to the, the flea market as after all the selling fees and, and such that I would sell this on eBay, I might only end up with 
maybe eight bucks or so anyway and i can get like around five or so at the flea market and that's the case with a lot of this stuff where it might sell on ebay but by the time all of the uh the fees and and such that i have to pay for selling these i'm going to get about the same at the flea market <music>